In this Tech 5, we're gonna take a look at the Angular CLI and discuss how we can use it to build our applications. So the first thing we need to do is install the Angular CLI. Now you'll need Node.js version 6.10 or higher. Now once you have it, we can use an NPM command. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install an app that we're gonna run in a subfolder called Angular Demos. And I'm just gonna open up a command prompt first off here. Now you can run this command anywhere on your machine, but this is where we're ultimately gonna to want to generate our project. So I'm gonna run an npm install dash g for global at angular slash CLI. And this will install the CLI on your machine. Now the version I'm gonna show will certainly be different than what you will get because they do update it fairly frequently, which is a good thing. Let's go ahead and let this install, and then we'll run a few basic commands. Okay, so now that it's installed, what can we do with it? Well, first off, we can generate Angular projects. So to do that, I can run ng new and then give it a name. I'm gonna call it my project. And from my project, I can add command line switches, such as I would like to add routing and a custom prefix. I'm gonna call it code with Dan, CWD. This will scaffold out my startup project and install the dependencies. So we'll go ahead and let these run. Okay, so now the dependencies are installed and we have scaffolded out all the starter code we need. We're gonna get a component and a module and a routing module as well. And so let's go ahead and see what we have. Now I have my editor set up where I can launch it from here, but you can just go into the subfolder that you created to do this. Now, if I launch it here, if I do an LS, you'll see the project is actually one level down now. It's my project. So what I'll do is first CD into that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and launch my editor. Or again, you can just go to that folder and open it in your editor. Now here's what we get out of the box. You'll notice right off the bat, we have our source and we have an app. And here's the starter component and modules we get. And then everything else we need for building, the TS config, our package JSON and everything needed is ready to go. So how do we actually try out this app? Well, since I'm in that folder, I can now use a command first off to make sure that we can serve up the app. And that is called ng serve. And I'm gonna add on dash O and this will open the browser. So we'll launch this. And what this is doing is now building and also launching the browser. And it's gonna keep our code in sync. I'll show you that right now. So let me pin this off to the left. Let's go over to our editor and I'm gonna go into the component it generates for us right here. And you'll notice that we have a title of CWD right here. So let's go ahead and watch this change kind of live without us having to rebuild every time. So I'm gonna name this customer's website or whatever you wanna call it, save, and now watch as it magically updates. Pretty awesome. So it has that all built in and under the covers it's running Webpack and automatically doing this build for us. So we can also use the CLI from here. I'm gonna leave that server going, but I'm gonna open up a new command prompt from the root, and I'm gonna do an ngg component, and we'll call this customers list. Now this is gonna do a little bit of magical stuff. It'll generate HTML, it'll generate a CSS file, a unit test file, and a TypeScript file for the component. Now, if I wanna see what it's gonna do, but not actually have it do it, I can do dash D, and this will be a dry run, which will then write out the task it would perform, and you'll notice it'll even update the module with the declaration for the component. Very cool. That's probably the easiest thing to forget as an Angular developer. So let's go ahead and say, yeah, that's what I want. I'm gonna take off the dash D, run it again, and now this will officially write out these files to the hard drive, and you'll notice I now have some new functionality. If we scroll back up here, I have a customer's list. Now it doesn't do much, but if we come into the TypeScript file here, you'll see my prefix. So let me go ahead and grab that. I'm gonna run back to the app module HTML. And let's tweak this a little bit. So I'm gonna take out the links they give us, and I'm gonna make a new tag for our custom component. We'll put that in and save. Go back and notice it works. There's my custom component now showing up. So it was very quick to generate that component, update the module, and then I can now start developing this component live. Now from here to kind of wrap up, we can also use NGG to generate services. We can do classes, interfaces, and much more, pipes, things like that. But we can also use it to do the official build. Now right now we're using just the ng serve to do that. Let me stop it 
and do an ng build. And what this will do is generate a dist folder in our project that has all the code we would need to deploy to, for instance, a test or staging type server. Now this isn't a production optimized build, but it will certainly work. So if we look over here, you'll see I now have a dist folder and that's all the code I would need to move to my server. Now, if I'm ready to go to production, we can optimize it by saying dash dash prod. And if I hit enter here, this will do ahead of time compilation and do some other optimizations. And there's even other command line switches you can run there to get this going. Now, the final thing is if you're doing unit testing, you can also do ng test. Now, I would have broken the test because I changed the title. But ng test will actually launch a test runner called Karma, give us a reporter in the browser. And this will pop up in just a moment. And you'll see that we now have the ability to run unit tests. And these should fail. If I scroll down, there'll be a, something here about the app title was changed, which we did. But it's very easy to run that. We can do linting, we can do end-to-end -end tests, and so much more. So I hope that gives you a quick idea in this Tech 5 about what you can do with the Angular CLI. And thanks for tuning in.